Hello everyone, my name is Chen. Welcome to my channel. This is my first English video. If you are new here, I am a Chinese girl who studied abroad in the US for six years. Now I work as a growth marketing associate at a health tech company located here in New York. In my channel, I often share my journey working and study as an international student in the US and I also do some traveling vlogs video. So welcome. Today's video, I want to talk about imposter syndrome. So I've got my first full-time job and I've been working for almost half a year now. So as the only Asian non-native speaker in my company, I always feel incompetent. I doubt my ability and always think my colleagues know way more than I do and I don't deserve what I have right now. This has led to many negative impacts on my brain, on my inner voice. I feel like I'm trapped. I want to share my journey of experiencing imposter syndrome and several ways that um, I coped with it. Hope this video would be helpful for you. So let's get started. First of all, I want to share some facts about imposter syndrome. According to the study, more than 70% of women and men in the US are experiencing imposter syndrome. There are more than $190 billion spent on burnout. Women, especially women of color, are particularly likely to experience it. So what is imposter syndrome? By definition, imposter syndrome refers to an internal belief that you are not as competent as others consider you to be. It's the false assumption that others know way more than you and you are incompetent in every way. Such as, I know if I can meet others' expectations. I am not smart enough, I'm just stupid. I have to work harder and harder just to prove myself. There are like 10 million people who can do this better than me. I'm not enough. In fact, most people who have imposter syndrome are high achievers and those who are capable. For example, our company had a workshop on imposter syndrome and all of my colleagues they share their vulnerability. Um, it was so surprising to see my boss, who to me is a very competent young woman, um, inspiring, able to lead a big team, um, highly successful. However, during that workshop, she shared that she often feel very insecure about her capability and always think they're a better person who can take her position. It was really surprising to me, but also at the same time, I feel feel much more relieved. We are not alone in this journey. There are many people who are experiencing this imposter syndrome, especially those high achievers. So there are two common side effects of imposter syndrome. One is perfectionism and the other is procrastination. For perfectionists, you are likely to be very compulsive and wanted to do everything perfectly. For example, like checking your emails 3 a.m. in the morning, feel like you have to reply to each request, uh, even if you are during a, a vacation, working long hours, like 40 or 50 hours a week. Second type is procrastination. I personally fall under this bucket. I consider myself as a little bit introvert because I don't feel confident enough about myself. I would avoid speaking up or show my thoughts. I'm so afraid of others' judgment that I uh, would let them down, lower their expectation. I remember during this meeting we had a few weeks ago, my manager um, and our CMO, like my boss's boss, they were all in that meeting. I was so nervous that I, I would speak the wrong thing that I uh, just barely spoke during that meeting. Every time I feel like opening my mouth, this negative inner voice showed up again telling If I be so stupid and you shouldn't bring this up, your colleagues would think you are dumb. However, as I uh, shut, just shut down my thought, my colleague, she brought up the exact same idea. This has made me realize I am not stupid, I am not um, dumb, I am competent and capable. It's just this false assumption about myself decreased my performance and brought a lot of self-doubt. So how can we cope with imposter syndrome? I found four very effective ways that helped me and also I hope this can help you as well. The first one is keep a thought log to draw a line between ourselves and our thoughts. 
One of the most brilliant thing about human that separates us from animals is our thinking. We are able to think and reflect. So we should be proud of this. However, depending on how much and which thought we resonate and re uh, react to, it will influence our emotion and mind differently. Sometimes it can get very overwhelming um, to drown ourselves in certain negative thoughts. So we need to draw a line between what we think and ourselves. Here's the first method. Try to write down every negative thought you have and give it a name. I feel doubtful about myself. I would write down um, and I've written like, I don't feel smart. I'm not uh, competent. I'm not worthy. I have to work harder and harder just to prove myself. And I gave all these negative thoughts a name, evil devil. You can use whatever you'd like. Effective because it um, draws the line and separates what we think we are uh, from who we really are. Now here's the second method. Create helpful affirmation. Affirmation is so, so powerful. Um, every time I will write my morning journal, uh, which include at least three questions. First, uh, what's my daily affirmation? Second, what's the three things I love about myself? And third, the person I'm becoming is. So I would uh, write down my answer to these three questions. I actually learned this from one of my favorite YouTubers, Jenim. So I turned the evil devil um, into positive self-affirmation. Instead of saying, I'm not smart, I would write, I am smart. And instead of saying, I am not competent, I have to work harder to prove myself. I would say, work can never be done and do this. You are not judged by how much you accomplish. You are already competent. Another great way I did is to write sticky notes and put them around my desk. For example, I was afraid of speaking up during the meeting. Um, so I took out sticky notes and write, I, my mind is full of brilliant ideas uh, to speak it up. Um, uh, you will never know until you tried. I put this near my laptop. Um, this really helped a lot because every time before meeting, I would look at that sticky notes um, and during the meeting, I feel more calm and more confident in speaking up. And the third method to cope with imposter syndrome is to learn to manage your stress level. Actually, when we feel more stressed, our mind is more likely to enter into a state of surviving. This will make us more emotional, less rational, and more anxious. We have to break the cycle and learn to reduce our stress. One very helpful solution to this is make a list of self-care things that you want to do. Uh, pick the things that you really enjoy and can bring you relaxation. Whether it is getting your nails done, buy a delicious snack, go for a walk, doing yoga, um, etc. Now I want to talk about the last way we can cope with imposter syndrome. That is setting boundaries. I always think that because I am the only uh, non-native speaker, I am Asian, I am international student, um, I have to spend much more time than others in work in order to just put myself on the same level. Like if I turn down the ass, I will lose an opportunity to prove myself and others will think, oh, you, you said no, you are so like, unreliable or not trustworthy. As I keep saying yes more and more, I realize it's not sustainable. Impossible to say yes to everything and be everything to everyone because we deserve saying no. For example, if your colleague uh, asks you to finish this project by the end of the day, but you have five other things on your hand that are higher priority, you should say no and be vulnerable. Explain why this is important to you. Saying like, I have uh, X, Y, and Z projects on hand that I need to turn in by a certain date. Um, and if you think there's a better person to handle these projects, just be clear on that. Everybody will be understanding. One thing that I tell myself is there will always be unfinished work, always gonna be projects that I want to do and I can do, but our time is limited, our physical energy is limited. If I keep saying yes to everything, I would drown myself and just be a workaholic. And work is not everything in life. 
And this is even more important if you are at a higher level position. I really love when my manager um, asked me to take my vacation uh, to use my PTO. Um, and we always start each meeting with asking each other, like, how was your weekend? How was your uh, vacation? And what's your recent self-care activity? These small things are what keeps people together. It makes me feel like my colleagues are super caring. I feel more pleasant working with them. Uh, and as a result, I will be more willing and happy to contribute myself at work. So that's all about my journey and more ways I think are very effective to cope with imposter syndrome. Keep a thought log, create helpful affirmation, manage your stress level and setting boundaries. I wanted to end today's video with a quote. It's not what you are that holds you back, it's what you think you are. So I hope today's video is helpful for you. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please comment below sharing your journey and reaction. See you guys in the next one. Bye.